All right, all right, I'm back again, and we're going to continue from where we left off in the last episode. So at the end of the last episode, I mentioned that we are going to have a system design. And looking at the screen now, I have one, which is not too detailed, but I believe we get the whole idea. So within this system design, I've spelled out what most of our players will be doing. So in the case of the global repo, it was going to be the unique identification of the prop. So this is just going to be an agreement for our card networks. It's nothing special. It's not going to be a system on its own. However, it's just going to be a storage where they can find out what card network has taken a specific unique number. So that's all it is. Then we have our card network itself. And in this case, it's going to be an interface through which our financial institutions can interact with and figure out how to generate a card number. And yeah, in terms of what is going to be performing, it's going to have interfaces for both authentication and validation. Then finally, we have the financial institution itself, which we've been working on for a while now. So coming down into a detailed uh, diagram, yeah, still using the draw, it looks, it makes everything look jagged, but yeah, it's the fun of it. And for this, we have the interaction between the user, the global registry, the financial institutions, the card network, and so on. And adding to this is also going to include what we are going to use to achieve all this. So the user is going to want to create a card that is going to interact with the financial institution. So the financial institution would reach out to the card network on which they want to generate a card. And here they would generate and register their higher hand. Okay. So once they register with the card network, the card network generates a unique ID for them, also known as the issuer identification number. And yeah, that is the whole process here. And the card network also interacts with the global registry to kind of inform them of the available slots they can take up on. So that's the interaction with that. And if you take a look at what we plan to use here, this is a Redis DB. So the question would be, okay, why are we using Redis DB? Is Redis really a DB or a cache um, processor? Because that's what most people tend to use Redis DB for. And yes, Redis is actually a DB. It's just that it's quite expensive to manage. And that's why we tend to use other DB to manage large data. But when you're dealing with very little data that are usually on the form key value, then Redis is a DB for you. But when you are dealing with data that has complex structures and you need to interact with the way the structure works, then you want to explore other kind of DB. Then also we have the payment gateway here. Again, the payment gateway is also going to interact with the global registry because one thing you will note is when you try to type your card number into a payment gateway's interface, you will realize that it tends to recognize the card you are typing. And that's because a payment gateway can look up the global registry to identify what card you are typing in. And one of the reasons why we are using Redis DB is to ensure that the interaction is very fast such that you don't even know that is going on. And for the card network, we are going to be exploring growth for our backend as usual. Then we'll be making use of NoSQL database. So prior to this time, most of the database we work with are SQL. So Postgres is a sample of one. MySQL is also a sample. And you might want to ask, why are we going the way of NoSQL? And the reason for going the way of NoSQL is because I believe whatever we want to do on the card network is not very in-depth, it's not really managing transaction, it's not really managing different um, user contests, it's not going to have an interface where different users will come to do all sorts of things. So it's just going to interact with the financial institution, generate a unique ID for them, and map it into whatever API they've exposed. That's simple enough. So a new SQL should be sufficient for that. And this brings me back to what system design is all about. Like I said before, system design is all about designing the interaction and ensuring that you use the best suited architecture for it. Ensure that you use the necessary code where necessary. Ensure that you use the necessary system where needed. So system design covers not using SQL for this scenario because that would be an overkill. We don't need the complexities of SQL for this. The same thing about using Redis DB for the global registry. Again, we can use SQL DB for this, we can use a Postgres DB, but obviously, due to what we intend to use it for, it's going to also be an overkill. So that's by the way. So in general, here's the system design, and technically, this is what we'll be exploring uh, moving forward. However, I think we can get the global registry out of the way immediately, and um, prior to now, I was exploring that already. So initially, I thought of generating um, a live or remote kind of Redis CLI, then it came back to me that I can just do this uh, on my local machine. I can undo it with Docker and that should work. So yeah, that's what I've done. And if we come back to my machine now, 
coming back to fintech, um, I have this so global registry uh, fin grids. So we are going to pipe them up like that. That means in the future, we're also going to have the card network like that. So within my global registry, all I have is just a Docker Compose file. And we're going to open this up within VS Code. So let's check it out. And all that this entails include this. So we specify the version of Docker we are working with. We specify the image of the Redis. We define the container, we define the port, and we specify the volume on our machine to kind of um, make sure that this data is persistent. And that's all. Again, Redis is a database, which means your data will be available unless you decide to delete it. Contrary to the notion that after a while the data will grow, it won't. It will always be here unless you remove it. So, yep, to run it, you all have to do docker-compose up or dash d to run it in a dash mode. So it's already running and to access the server, we need redis cli. So technically the redis cli command is usually redis dash cli. But as you can see, I don't have that installed on my system. And what we might want to do is to find out how to install redis cli on your Windows machine, which there are a lot of documents out there that make things frontless. So what I found out to be much more easier is to use the Redis CLI through NPM. So yeah, I believe most of us have NPM installed, Node installed. So installing globally should be easy. And yep, you are going to use this NPM install dash G globally, Redis CLI. And once you install it, this is what you want to explore. So RD CLI. So instead of using Redis dash CLI, use RD CLI. So RD CLI when type below, we try to connect to the default um, server, which we have one, and the default port is 6379. So using that is going to connect to that server, as you can see. However, if you run this on a different um, configuration, here is how you connect to it. So you type in rdcli again, then dash h for the host. In this case, the host is localhost or 127.0.0.1, then dash ports, and your port is going to be whatever you defined or Sistery 79 in my case, then I'll enter. So to check through all the keys you've defined, you can just do span zero. And this is going to show all the keys you've defined. And in this case, zero is going to be available by default. However, you'll find out that I have an extra key four. So this is what I've defined to represent FinSA. So any number that starts with four would be recognized as FinSA. So that's what I'm doing with. So in our case, if we try to generate a card and it starts with theory, then that card is most likely invalid. So now if we want to take a look at what is inside the key four, we can have a get key four and we have FASA. And that's all we'll be going through on today's episode. Now next we'll be moving towards the card network, setting things up and making provisions to allow the financial institution to connect to it. And there you have it guys. See you in the next one. Bye for now.